Hello, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present here at the City Engine User Meeting in uh, Zurich in 2019. Um, very disappointed I couldn't be there uh, in person. Uh, it's just some unfortunate circumstances, but um, thrilled uh, the opportunity and the invite extended to me from from Matt, Bruno, and Gabrielle, and everyone over there at Urban, and um, thankful for the opportunity to still provide this um, this presentation. Hopefully, it's not too awkward, uh, sort of watching a pre-recorded video. Um, but uh, I really do appreciate the opportunity, and I hope to see um, everyone next year. I was really looking forward to to meeting a lot of you. I know I follow a great number of you on on Twitter. I follow your work; it's inspiring. Um, it's not that often I can have a conversation with someone about CGA. Um, so I was really looking forward to the opportunity to um, to be there in person. But um, perhaps 2020 uh, or maybe even in the, the fall, I'm trying to uh, see if I can arrange a trip uh, out there to Zurich. Um, so yeah, special thanks to to Matt, Bruno, Gabrielle, and everyone over, uh, over there. Um, would also like to thank Dominic and Pascal and the, the entire City Engine team for this awesome software uh, that really made all this possible. So a little bit about me. I am a principal and a co-founder of House Silvina Associates. Um, we're based in Chicago. Uh, we do work all over the country. My specialty is 3D and development visualization in GIS. Um, I've presented a number of different conferences about planning graphics and maps and and was an er early user of, of SketchUp. Um, I know one of the things that we see now with uh, the 3D web scenes is Sketchy Styles. I was one of the creators of the very first Sketchy Styles in SketchUp. Still, to this day, it ships with, uh, with a style I created. Um, so, yeah, I think I have a good, pretty good understanding about the importance of role of graphics, at least in the field of city planning and, and urban design, which is where my specialty is. Um, my firm, um, I started it 15 years ago with my business partner, John Houseel, uh, was just the two of us. We've grown it to a practice of about 25 planners. We love what we do. Uh, we strive for innovation and creativity. Um, we do work all over the United States. I think we're active right now. Projects in about 22 different states. Um, and we do studies big and small from big regional master plans to real small specific sites. Um, and constantly we're just trying to sort of innovate and, and, and be fun. It's something we're real proud of. In 2014, we received a National Planning Excellence Award from the American Planning Association. And in giving us this distinction, they noted our use of technology. And um, I've said this uh, to some people, um, how we were using technology in 2014. We are so far past that now and probably more deserving of this award uh, now than, than we were back then. Uh, this is a graphic we, we put together uh, for the Ezra User Conference a couple of years ago, and we wanted to highlight really everything that's in our geodesign toolbox. Uh, so these are all the, call it, I guess, our core tools that uh, we're in and out of on a daily basis as we, we run through all the different planning that we do. Um, so there's a lot of Esri uh, software in here. There's a lot of Adobe software in here. We're still doing things like uh, sketching by hand. Um, uh, Unreal Engine has been a um, you know an exciting addition uh, to what we do. There's some software we created here, Map.Social. But um, I want to talk to you here today about the City Engine and in our work uh, with City Engine, how how we use it. Um, and I can say, you know, we get real excited about GIS and and City Engine. Um, you know, I can remember driving and slamming my brakes just to capture this picture um, or pulling out my phone when I saw this guy driving by. Um, um, just sort of, you know, the kind of the nerdy stuff that that uh, we get excited about uh, as we as we run through our our day. Um, so. We're working right now with the city of or the town of Greenwich, Connecticut. It's just outside of Manhattan. It's a, a suburb for Manhattan. Uh, it's an affluent suburb. Um, and I'll give you a, just a quick peek in how we use City Engine on, on this project. Not a real big City Engine project. We, you know, some some simple CGA code. We took their building footprints and extruded a 3D map. 
and highlighted in the middle is a corridor. It's called um, the Post Road or, or um, Putnam Avenue. And we highlighted the existing buildings and we had these zoning workshops and the residents of the community were telling us that you know, they didn't really like the new development that was coming out of the ground. Uh, so one of the things we thought was important to show them was here's their existing buildings uh, using city engine applying uh, their zoning rules to the parcels. We showed them these are the buildings that you could get as of right with your zoning ordinance. Um, and then when we showed that next to the buildings that exist, um, you know, they, they could see the disparity between, uh, you know, what they're, what they're allowing and what they want. Um, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, we were brought on board really to help them with their graphics, with their maps, uh, with their 3D work. They have a very rich data set. They have a 3D model of the entire Cape. Um, so we plugged right into their servers. Uh, all the maps we created were pulling live from their database. Um, but this one here, this example, we did uh, the Cape Cod transect. So similar to uh, Andres Duaney's uh, smart code where you have the transect, they identified eight different districts uh, within the Cape. So what we did is we combed through their GIS and we sort of found where we thought uh, these eight different place types lived. They have real rich data. They have paint as parking lots. Uh, as a as a line file, so all the stripes in their parking lots, driveways, building footprints. We took all of that data, we brought it into the city engine, and we wrote um, just these real small rules for it: uh, a rule for paint, a rule for pavement, a rule for grass. Um, and we turned back and we gave them these three D models of the different places. Uh, so this is how it lives in the plan. Um, you can see the natural areas, nothing too exciting there. The rural development areas. Um, and then their suburban development. Again, that paint actually drawn out from um, offsetting the center line. Uh, I think I brought it in as a graph network um, and wrote a real simple rule to, um, um, to outline it uh, based on you know six or eight inches. Uh, and this is something a little more recent, uh, working with a town outside of Indianapolis called Brownsburg, Indiana. Um, five years ago, they hired us to do a comprehensive plan for them. And this new expressway was, was under construction. Um, this is where it was. And so we did this visualization for them and we showed them what the expressway could look like, uh, as it runs through town. And they love this drawing. And I can tell you, um, Looks good. I have no idea uh, how many units were in here. Um, what we what we did is uh, we took the existing aerial and we went around and we pieced together little snippets from all over the country where we thought uh, we know we, we knew they wanted a lifestyle center or a mall. Uh, we knew they wanted multifamily housing that looked like this. And so in Photoshop, we stitched together and scaled into perspective uh, all these different drawings. Um, some are one-offs, you know, these little one office buildings. We place them in, stretch them in, and then we, uh, to sort of hide the, um, I guess the blemishes in, in the joins, uh, we ran it through a sketch filter and we sort of gave them this. And so this is what is in that plan. Um, uh, and it's been guiding them for, um, for the last five years. They've got a lot of developer interest. They've recently rehired us to uh, update the plan. And one of the things they asked for was, can you give us some better visualizations for this? Uh, we've seen some of the work your firm's been doing. It's progressed a lot in the last five years. We wanna sort of see um, some city engine work. So taking that, um, that corridor, we brought it into city engine, um, identified you know, real simply the different types of, of land uses. We built out these dashboards so we know how many uh, acres, uh, we're talking about how many square feet, um, we're using their zoning rules. Um, so hundred foot setbacks for light industrial properties, rear yards, where the parking lots are getting located and, um, still in progress. We're about 80, 85% of the way there. Um, and I can tell you, they, um, uh, they absolutely love it. And, um, this is sort of uh, sort of what it looks like now. It's a little further along. We got the interstate in, uh, some traffic. We've swapped out those 
uh, Lego trees for some real vegetation in the parking lots. Um, the next step is we'll start building some facades on those buildings. Um, but kind of a, a pretty good leap from where we were five years ago to where we are now, uh, all made possible, of course, by, by City Engine. So some of the questions I get asked is sort of, what does our workflow look like? And um, the answer we sort of give back is it varies. It depends on what we're trying to do. So we have really three workflows, a City Engine scene workflow, where we're gonna be pulling in 3D uh, assets that we build either in SketchUp or Blender or some other um, 3D product. We'll develop those assets. Uh, we'll, we'll export them here in step two as Collada files or OBJs. Um, and now we got a pretty extensive uh, library. We also use um, TurboSquid and form fonts. There's a couple of really good resources for some, for some good 3D content. Um, We'll start to create a concept in City Engine, simply adding the center lines, subdivision parameters, uh, the lots. Uh, then we just write the CGA, we call in those 3D assets, and then we apply the rules to generate the scene. And probably the best example uh, of this workflow, uh, we were hired uh, to do a master plan for Bentonville, Arkansas. Boy, probably pretty close to the geographic center of the United States. It's the home of Walmart Corporation. Um, so a beautiful downtown um, Walmart has been criticized here for sort of killing the mom and pops uh, downtown Bentonville I don't know if I've seen a nicer sort of town center uh, pedestrian area here in the United States um, but outside uh, of the downtown and their growth areas they were really struggling with suburban development they're getting these developers uh, that weren't communicating with each other they were just sort of um, building out parcels as one property owner wanted to sell. So there wasn't a lot of coordination here. And so we wanted to create this graphic that showed how they could uh, implement some best practices for their suburban development. So on top of a Google aerial, we just sketched out this plan. Um, this is sort of what we we're thinking of. So one of our planners in-house sketched this out. Um, I'll say this in this example, geo-referencing this JPEG was probably the hardest thing uh, of this whole project. Um, once we had established sort of our, uh, our geographic location and our map projection in City Engine, uh, getting this in here at the exact location was, uh, was pretty tough, I'm not gonna lie. What we ended up doing was uh, geo-referencing it inside of, um, inside of ArcGIS, uh, exporting it then as a TIFF with a world file and then bringing it to City Engine to make it sit in the right spot. Um, so we brought it in, I'll just sort of uh, walk you through, fade it out. And then in City Engine, we trace over top uh, with the graph network or the street network, um, that drawing. And from there, uh, it's real simple. Um, I think we just use the modern streets rule for this one. Um, drop them in, you can see we're ad adding the trees on the parkway, um, sidewalks, crosswalks. Um, from there, we created those blocks. We applied the city's subdivision parameters for uh, minimum lot sizes and lot widths. And, uh, and then there's zoning parameters. And then we called in our 3D uh, models, all those sketch of houses that we had. Um, start to finish took only about uh, two hours. Uh, and let's say an hour of that was spent uh, just fidgeting with that, with that graphic. Um, so this is what it looks like inside that plan. Um, we sort of call attention to uh, the subdivision design characteristics and some best practices with those numbers. Brought it into Photoshop to sort of punch up the colors. Um, but a, I think a, a pretty cool graphic for this plan, something that, uh, um, boy, I, I don't even know how long this would have taken me um, using just SketchUp alone, probably uh, at, least a, at least a week. Uh, never mind being able to move through this with all those uh, trees and vegetation and SketchUp, uh, just impossible. Um, but using City Engine to kind of stitch all this together um, uh, was key. Another workflow we have is where we're using City Engine as our asset workflow. So here, we never really intend to uh, develop our final um, scene in City Engine. We're just going to use City Engine to give us a detailed 3D model. Uh, that we're going to kick back into to SketchUp or another 3D program like uh, 
like Eon or, or now Unreal. And so we create a site plan in SketchUp. We identify the buildings, the locations, the trees. And then what we do is we export the building footprints as Collada files, or I've now found um, my favorite way to do it is uh, KML files. Um, we bring those into, into City Engine where we apply the City Engine rules uh, to give us a more detailed model. We bring that back into SketchUp. Um, and then from there, we render it uh, and do the finishing touches. So uh, this drawing here, um, poster exhibit we gave to a city to how to reutilize a, uh, an old area. Um, all the little storefronts uh, and buildings generated inside of City Engine. So that workflow really starts with taking a look at a site. This is a different site a little further up the road, but the exact same process. Um, we take the building, we start to sort of look at that general program, sketching out some ideas and concepts. Uh, from there, we refine them, um, just kind of giving the client some, some idea of what we're talking about, not detailing out the parking areas uh, per se, just kind of showing where the parking areas are going to be, what existing building is going to stay, um, what that circulation pattern looks like. Um, and from there, we, we try and work with them to, to pick an option. Um, we bring that in as a JPEG into, um, into SketchUp. And real almost out of the box, we're trying to find the view. And this is sort of something that uh, some advice I know I give when, I, when I'm teaching people how to use SketchUp is um, if all you're producing is a static render and there's never going to be anyone sort of walking around, uh, don't spend a lot of detail on the, on the back sides. Um, almost treat it like a Hollywood movie set. Um, now I'll say with the immersive 3D and giving someone the ability to, to browse and explore it on the web, um, not a good idea, but if, uh, if you know you're just looking for a static image, um, so if I figure out what that view is, is important. It lets you know too how much detail you're going to need. Um, so we find that view. We quickly just sort of mask these out, uh, give us an idea of what uh, what the site looks like. And then we brought those building footprints into City Engine. And so this is this rule we have. Uh, we call it our DBG, our Detailed Building Generator. Um, I'm looking at the year of this. It's March of 2015, so uh, four years old. Um, we're on our second or third generation of this, um, but we pull in those footprints and we can uh, really start to add things like building articulation, um, banding, balconies, window patterns, um, a real detailed uh, 3D model. Um, we made a lot of changes to the, that rooftop and I know a question someone asked me is why do we put rooftop mechanicals uh, on, on some of our models. And um, what we have found is the key to drawing is being able to see. And as we sort of look at aerial photographs, we start to, you, know, you really start to analyze what your eye is seeing and it'll help you draw it, just add a little more realism. Um, when you don't add little details like that, all the 3D buildings you're drawing are just white and flat on top and they start to contrast with, uh, with some of the existing buildings. So, um, yeah, so we use this this rule uh, or rules like it. Sometimes it's just for parking lots. Um, and um, we're just kind of quickly jumping into um, into City Engine, give us some detailed 3D work that we could um, um, uh, bring back into a 3D program. So ultimately it was a building something like this. This was an early export. Um, brought it into uh, into City Engine, or sorry, into SketchUp. Uh, we rendered this right in SketchUp with a program called Shader Light. Uh, makes it, you know, makes it just a little more attractive than just a straight SketchUp uh, export. There's some ray tracing uh, that happens. Um, takes a while, but ultimately uh, we produced this rendering for them and uh, the city loved it, and they asked us to explore another option. They thought this was too dense. The building was too close to the corner, and um, they also felt that uh, putting detention beneath the ground was going to be too expensive. Uh, so they asked us for another option, and I'd say fortunately, with the money we had saved um, by not having to do all that detailed 3D in the building, we had enough budget left over to give them 
uh, another option. So that is the exact same process we did for this. And I'll say one of the things we're excited about now is taking um, you know, this workflow and, and bringing it into like programs like uh, Unreal uh, with the Datasmith plugin uh, to give us the ability just to kind of drop right into our, our scenes and to be able to sort of run around. We have a city outside of, uh, outside of Rally that's asked us to give them an immersive town center development uh, in Unreal Engine. And so the entire project I'll be working on this summer is uh, is something a lot like this. Uh, it'll be built uh, in City Engine uh, and then brought into Unreal for um, for an immersive walkthrough. They're gonna put a kiosk in the City Hall, um, either have people navigate through WASD or a Xbox joystick or something, but give people the ability to sort of walk around um, this new town center area that we're planning out for them. So uh, something we're extremely excited about. A um, little bit more on that later. And then the next, I guess the final workflow I'll highlight is just a hybrid workflow. It's really how all that software in that wheel of course, sort of comes together um, to give us the, the products we're looking for. So it all sort of has the same workflow. Step one, we're creating that program. Um, we're using pen and paper. We're identifying what needs to be developed. In step two, we're collecting GIS data. What do we need for the scene? Um, we're looking for parcel information and center lines. And then inside of uh, ArcGIS, we're going to edit that information to the extent possible, knowing that in City Engine, we'll be writing rules that connect to all those attributes. Um, where there's holes or where there's um, maybe some key sites that need a little more control over the design, uh, we'll use um, uh, CAD or SketchUp to do a little more detailed site planning. Uh, then we're just applying those CGA rules and City Engine to the center lines, the parcels, and those custom shapes we created in step three. And then the last one is sort of you know the finishing touches. If we need to bring it into Unreal, Photoshop, SketchUp, uh, Eon, um, Eon View, whatever, however we're going to render it out, we'll uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We know that. Um, um, you know, City Engine uh, produces some nice visuals, but um, you know, to, to really get uh, the best, it, it really needs to get get rendered out of out of something. I've I've accomplished a little bit of a hack with some grass, and I'll I'll show you what that is in, in just a bit. Um, so this past year at the Ezra User Conference, we had a uh, a map gallery. We showcased eight of our maps um, at the map gallery. So. Here they all are sort of in a row, one, uh, one through eight. Um, and then we created a little tiny version of our, of our exhibit. Um, and there I am sort of walking this gentleman through uh, the evolution of professional hockey, uh, a map. But two of the projects on here I wanna highlight, and this is the, you know, the title of my, my presentation, Reimagining a City uh, with GIS. Um, this took second place uh, in the 3D map category. And then we have an economic win for geodesign. This took first place in the 3D map category. We also won an award for this Flint. Um, I think in total they give out 12 or 15 awards and uh, we are pleased to have won three of them um, for our work. Okay, so um, this first one, an economic win for geodesign. Uh, I think Christian last year uh, presented on this uh, for me a little. It's where we took a golf course and um, turned it into a corporate campus. Um, and so the city was facing this loss of a major employer. Uh, but part of what we were hired to do, we did this downtown master plan for the city. Uh, and it included, um, let me go back here, sorry. The typical um, planning graphics you'd see. Um, but what I wanna highlight is this opportunity sites where we highlighted three different types of opportunity sites um, green being sites that would add value, meaning um, shouldn't be a priority, but if they redeveloped, it would probably be um, um, a positive contribution to downtown. Uh, these yellow ones were redevelopment priority, larger sites, visible sites, um, under single ownership. And then these red ones were these catalyst sites, these sites that um, the city should put a focus on uh, developing. Uh, you can see how big they are. Uh, these are the types of sites where if they develop, they're going to start generating um, 
development around it. And so um, we used uh, SketchUp and City Engine to create these little uh, simple vignettes for those yellow sites um, and just wanted to convey some, some simple uh, illustrations. But this implementation um, top five was um, bringing a major employer to downtown. And so uh, they asked us to take a look at their waterfront and, and visualize it for them. And so sketching out uh, the potential of what the waterfront was, we had to include a, uh, a basketball arena. We knew there was a minor league basketball team um, that was looking for a city. They told us they wanted some class A office space, some high end office space right on the water. Um, so we sketched out this this concept, and then um, and then using that um, I guess that hybrid approach, uh, using SketchUp for the the site plan, and then City Engine for all these rules, uh, we popped this up into 3D. Uh, we gave them a web scene. Um, they went out and they marketed it. Uh, marketed it, and uh, before this plan was developed, um, they had managed to. Um, get a commitment from the basketball team. The city started building the arena. Uh, the Wisconsin herd is now playing minor league basketball um, uh, in, in Oshkosh. Uh, what we later learned though, was that a class A office space was for a company called Oshkosh Corporation, a uh, Fortune 500 company uh, that um, was getting some pressure to consolidate all these regional offices and bring them in under one, uh, one campus. And so they told the city they needed a wow campus, 40 plus acres. Um, they wanted to be off the interstate. They wanted to be in a park like setting. Um, and so the city exhausted all options to, to keep them and ultimately didn't think they could. And it was when we basically said, Hey, the golf course fits all of that criteria. Um, so they asked us to, to come to town, to hold a conversation with their residents and to help sell the concept of um, taking the city golf course and uh, making it um, a campus for the Oshkosh Corporation. Uh, so we gave us only about two weeks to start to help them visualize. So we you know, took to our little sketch plans, tried to think of, of, of what it could look like. We gave them a couple different options for uh, for the area, one maximizing open space, the other one maximizing what we felt would be the um, market opportunities for additional development. Ultimately, they chose the one that um, that maximized the open space. Uh, so we did this in, in SketchUp. Um, and then really um, a lot of the site, site work here um, was done in SketchUp, although some of the, uh, the street work in, in the buildings up and through here um, popped it into City Engine, rented out. We gave them a, a again another web scene where they could uh, um, give it to the Oshkosh Corporation to um, tour the site, to look at it, um, to see exactly what it was we were um, uh, we were proposing. Uh, we we gave this to the uh, the residents that we showed them. You know, this is what we're talking about. We're not losing all the open space they're taking 40 acres there's going to be plenty of open space for all these other uses and um at the end of the day uh we got buy-in from from everyone i still remember the very first resident standing up saying you know we can find a new place to golf but if we lose uh, this employer um this city's in trouble um so the city submitted this bid application to oshkosh corporation to say hey we'd love for you to stay in town um, we'd love for you to take the city golf course and turn it into your campus. And, uh, so this was the poster we put together, um, and the visuals, um, ultimately we were pleased, uh, in November of last year, uh, November, 2017, sorry, they announced that they were accepting the bid. Um, they, uh, purchased the property from the city and the building. Uh, is under construction. They broke ground. Uh, you can see they'll be open later this year. Uh, the city has been frequently sending along um, some images for us to help us track uh, the progress. So um, quite a success story, something we're proud of. It earned us some, uh, the SAG Award, a Special Achievement in GIS Award last year. 
um, for um, for the work. And the sort of last one, this is uh, this at a, at a bigger scale, um, reimagining a city with uh, using GIS and City Engine. So this is in Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, this took second place in, in the poster uh, where the city asked us to re-envision the downtown core and their approach characters. Um, so the final poster that we uh, assembled sort of tells the whole story and I'll, I'll do a, a deeper dive in it right now. Um, so this was the, the final exhibit. So the story goes back to earlier that year, we were working with the city of Battle Creek on their master plan. So the city's long range 20 year blueprint how everything should um, should grow and build out. Uh, all of our planning studies, we do a ton of research, things like uh, market research data, demographics, looking to make sure that when we develop these plans, uh, there's some science behind it. They're not just colors on a map. Uh, we know if we're designating an area for commercial that uh, we've done the market assessment to know that there's enough commercial potential in the market. Um, Ultimately, I think it's pretty disingenuous as a planner to um, just color a street red because it's a busy road and you want it to be commercial. Um, so the the entire GIS stack, and this is where we say what geodesign is to us, allows us to put a lot more spatial intelligence into uh, the plans we're developing. So we developed this land use plan. Um, we looked at things like green infrastructure and and catalyst redevelopment sites and and the city asked us they said this area along um columbia avenue we have the the lake in town we don't feel it's uh very well utilized um there's no beach there's no place to get at it um everything sort of turns its back to it um and then the corridor itself it's real auto-centric not a lot of pedestrian orientation it needs sort of a a shot in the arm and so using city engine we developed uh this concept it's a this document's 11 by 17 so this is a 40 or sorry 34 inch spread um so big wide spread showing columbia avenue um and we're highlighting here you know larger redevelopment at some of these key intersections what it would look like how it would be treated um you can see the buildings closer up in the street, but not in all instances. But what we're saying is, you know, sometimes you might need to go into the residential areas. Really, all of the um, the best practice recommendations. Um, um, so this was done entirely in City Engine. We got a rule that just scatters boats in the water. Uh, we use that in Oshkosh too. Um, then on the other side um, of the spread. We start to get in where we're activating the beach, um, um, so the parking lot, mixed use buildings, um, and this same filter that we used in that Brownsburg we used here. I'm not sure why. I don't think they like the um, the feel of the 3D work. Um, didn't feel like it matched the rest of the document, so they asked if we could make it look more cartoony. Uh, so the solution was just to bring it into Photoshop with uh, with a treatment. Um, but what's exciting though is the Kellogg Foundation, so Kellogg cereal and cornflakes, um, um, they're based in Battle Creek, Michigan. The foundation that helps uh, the city with its, with its economics saw this plan and said, uh, boy, that's great. Would it be possible to see what the entire city would look like if it were redeveloped? Um, so a pretty big task for us, um, something no way would have ever been possible with um, without City Engine. Um, I, I'm trying to think uh, how many different parcels, there are thousands. Um, and to come up with a redevelopment scenario for every single one, um, I mean, probably could have retired on it if they would have uh, had us detail it out, but... Um, they gave us a decent sized budget and they asked us to, um, to help them visualize what it could be. And so we took the land use classifications. Uh, you can see here, um, ag, traditional neighborhoods, suburban residential. We took all these designations and inside of City Engine, we developed um, the land use typologies or the rules that would generate these different areas. So a traditional neighborhood, a multi-unit 
residential neighborhood or multi-unit structures, neighborhood commercial, community open space, corridor commercial, downtown mixed use, and then uh, production center employment, and some of them are even these special areas. And then we also identified, um, I think, 13 different road classifications. 12, I'm sorry, 12 different classifications of roads. So the four lane divided highway, um, five, lane, five lane arterial with a center turn lane. Um, we built out all of these streets um, um, and city engines. So we had these land use typologies. Um, and this was an early test. Um, so we went to see if our rules were working. We sort of extruded out uh, the study area and these approach corridors. Um, and we started to apply the rules to see if we were getting really what we're, we're hoping for. Um, and here we're just sort of color coding them. Ultimately, this is what was, um, what was delivered to the city. Uh, this is a, a, a shot out of the browser. So there's um, a 3D web scene um, and I'll share the link with you at the at the end of um, the project or at the end of the presentation. But uh, the entire thing is uh, is inside of a um, a three D web scene inside of ArcGIS Online. Um, so the white buildings, the buildings that are remaining, the buildings in color um, are the uh, the new buildings that are getting created. So I'll walk you through sort of how we got from. Uh, parcel information to this. Uh, I mentioned that GIS process here. You can see inside of ArcGIS Pro, I've highlighted a center line. We added fields. Uh, these are all going to be attributes we're going to read uh, inside of, uh, of City Engine. So the street width, this is in meters, sidewalk right, sidewalk left, number of lanes, what that center treatment was, what the parkway width was, the sidewalk width. Um, and then um, what was to the left and right. So inside of City Engine, um, you can see here it is just sort of all brought in. Um, let's see, 4,260 4, objects. Um, so it's a collection of different places. Without the line work off, it looks identical to the, um, to the scene. So I'll walk you through some of um, the CGA and the approach to taking on some of these. The first one was the residential neighborhoods. Um, we, you could see how um, we took a parcel and then it's got all these splits in it. Well, what we wanted to do was after we applied the zoning information, so the setbacks, uh, we wanted to make sure that the leftover houses that were getting built uh, weren't ginormous. So if someone owned a really big residential lot and you just apply those setbacks, uh, we wanted to make sure that the resulting house wasn't too, too big or, or too small. Um, so within the CGA, we just did this recursive check. We kept splitting it by 50%. And then we have a, uh, an attribute um, that's max building footprint size. And we set that um, in some neighborhoods where we know the houses were a little larger to 2,000 square feet uh, in areas where we knew the... Um, neighborhoods were a little uh, less affluent, the lots were smaller. Uh, we set it down to about uh, 1,500 square feet. We also randomized the number of stories between a one story and a two story, um, and then randomized the roof colors. I think there's seven different colors of roofs, seven different colors of siding, uh, L-shaped buildings, square buildings, and then the roofs uh, are varied between the four. Um, so all the textures you're seeing, um, we drew by hand. I mentioned to you before the city wanted like a, car, uh, a softer cartoony look. Um, so what we did is we hand drew an illustrator, um, all the different uh, textures. And let me tab out here and I could show you. Um, so inside of Adobe Illustrator, um, we drew in uh, you know, a rear elevation of a house. Um, so that's just the, the patio door. We're putting a little drop shadow on there to give some visual relief. Uh, the siding is um, uh, just just a texture uh, or hand-drawn texture inside. Uh, same with the brickwork in here. Um, we literally drew everything uh, 
by hand. And if I show you the outline view, you can see all that geometry. So we we drew all those textures. Um, and exported them into um, into the folder, and then uh, ultimately brought them into Sketch uh, or a City Engine, where we use City Engine to randomly apply them. So, whether if it was the front elevation of a house, we put a front door; if it was the uh, rear, uh, we put a patio door. Um, kind of a weird block; it's a double frontage block. There's um, really two fronts on both of those. Um, but you can see the front doors along that street. So kind of a, a neat way. And here's a better look at where you can see how we had to subdivide to get um, realistic uh, housing sizes. Otherwise, if we hadn't done that recursive uh, split, um, those initial shapes would have really been gigantic. Um, for the multifamily, similar uh, approach. Um, but one of the things that we uh, we sort of noticed uh, as we became familiar with the community is a lot of the multifamily in town uh, is built up by the same developer, has kind of that same appearance. Um, and so what we did is we developed a few styles and we kind of clustered them together uh, and we matched styles. So buildings that are kind of near each other have the same style. As you move through the entire model, there's I think about 10 or 12 different types of multifamily styles. Um, but we're adding those balconies, um, and in our textures, you know, some shadows that show some relief. It's just a flat texture. We're trying to keep the polygons at a minimum. Um, our commercial areas, you know, these areas along busy highways, major, major uh, parking lots. Um, our rule we, we created, it creates this parking lot. You can kind of see the how the splits are handled. Uh, we texture in the stalls and then uh, we can add uh, cars through through just a slider how how occupied is that parking lot um, so a a detail we left off going onto the web we wanted to make sure the web scene was uh, was fast but a lot of the uh, the visuals we gave them the static imagery uh, we took these Lego trees we turned them into realistic trees we added cars we added people um, yeah so here we can change the aisle width the occupancy um, right inside of uh, of city engine um, in the last area that the downtown um, instead of parking in front we put the parking behind it uh, if the building was over so many stories instead of doing a surface parking lot uh, the CJ rule creates a parking deck um, so a parking structure um, let's see I can might as well tab out I can show you what that looks like right inside of um, city engine if it's open it's right here okay so here's that building um and you can see the the parking garage um uh, occupied um there's the there's the ramp i can um come into that rule um how many levels is it is it a 10 level parking garage um that ramp structure gets built uh the whole way um, and the other thing uh, I thought I did, I thought we, I was, maybe that was an optimization I was going to do. I was going to restrict on the other floors, restrict the parking to just the stalls by the windows. Um, you know, so I think it's kind of helps sell it when you see those, uh, those cars, but, um, I don't think there's a need to, you know, for a car like that to be, uh, in there. You're never going to see it, but, um. Yeah, so let me see here if I can show you um, yeah, the, the entire scene. Um, this was a special area where we, um, we use those detailed buildings. So these buildings are um, a little more detailed. Uh, we're, they were sort of the, um, these catalyst buildings. Um, but this parking garage rule, I was looking at it. I was like, oh, maybe I can share this. I think it's pretty simple. Um, but I think I noticed I was doing some, yeah, some cosine, um, some pretty complex math to kind of figure out how that ramp um, continued to kind of zigzag down, um, down the uh, down the parking structure. So, uh, 
Um, so this is sort of a before after. Um, you can see there the uh, the new vegetator the vegetation for that key site and uh, really what we did. Um, based on that, they actually asked us to identify some other key sites, give them a little more um, uh, treatment. Um, so quickly sketched them out in CAD, brought them into City Engine, uh, and gave them these renderings. They're using this now to market these sites. So where are we headed? Um, I mean, we're headed into Unreal Engine and the gaming engines for sure. Um, the Datasmith plugin has really made that possible. Um, what really got us amped up was a little side project we did in, in Source. And so Source is um, Counter-Strike, Team Fortress, Portal, uh, CSGO. Um, it's, it's another video gaming engine. Uh, we play some video games at work. Um, and what we wanted to do was surprise our staff with a, a level of our, of our office. Um, so using SketchUp, City Engine, Photoshop, ArcGIS Pro, and the Hammer Editor, uh, last summer we, we started looking around our office and we said, hey, can we model this out and give our, our staff um, sort of a playground, so to speak, to, uh, to have some fun in. Um, my brother's the architect. We had all the CAD plans, so we brought these into into SketchUp, but we, we did all the interior work inside of SketchUp. When we got outside in the streets is where uh, we did some really cool work with uh, with City Engine. Uh, so we started to take photos of everything in the office. Um, the steps on your way up to uh, our office, this sort of weird painting here with these, uh, um, these women that's at the top of our stairs. Um, kind of a cool building we're in, but um, dimensioned it out and then we started to look like what can we see from our office and this is where as planners and urban designers we were like we, we didn't think we could ignore it at first we thought years ago when we thought about this we didn't think we'd be able to go outside we thought it would just be like the blinds were closed um, but with city engine and in in ArcGIS we thought boy we we can't just ignore the outside and let's see what we can, what we can do if we go out there so uh, using GIS data from the city of Chicago I did this uh, quick extrusion of, uh, of, of the buildings uh, within downtown. Um, and then in City Engine did a quick view shed analysis to see how many buildings can we see uh, within, our, uh, within our level. Um, so what are we really talking about mapping? Ultimately, we brought this back into Arc, ArcGIS uh, to select the facades. Um, so I want to say we went from 4,200 buildings with um, what, probably 12,000 facades uh, down to about 600 facades, I think was ultimately what, uh, what made it into the game. Um, so just a ton of optimization. Um, and then we looked at the street and we thought the street was important. And this is where we learned a lot about uh, texturing. Um, we created this texture by hand in Photoshop, um, kind of destroyed it, started with, uh, with just pavement, painted all those white stripes by hand, erased them by hand, kind of made them look, uh, beaten and worn. I mentioned earlier, um, the key to drawing is being able to see. Um, and when you start to look at things, you start to notice all the imperfections. Those are the things that really help sell, um, sell a graphic and sell a visualization. So we started to kind of sketch out uh, the buildings and how they were all sort of tiled together uh, with the textures it would look like. Um, and ultimately, uh, you know, we started to model out the interior of our space. And um, this is some the final render, or final product outside of uh, um, looking at our office building, some of the, this is now all the city engine work. Um, and then there's a, a quick little fly through. So, um, yeah, using SketchUp on the interior 3D work, um, a lot of Photoshop work creating the textures. And I'll say that's the biggest lesson we learned through this is how important textures are. I think, 
I used to try and do everything with CGA and um, uh, every little extrusion. Um, seeing how well a normal map uh, can make a flat surface look 3D, um, it's incredible. Um, and so we learned a lot uh, in doing this. And um, really when you see when we get out onto um, the street outside of our office, some of the just the really cool work we're able to do um, um, with textures uh, and, and texture mapping onto um, a 3D environment we created uh, with City Engine. There's a little little shout out to uh, City Engine right there on that building. It will go up on the L tracks. Um, so we've shown this these drawings at a couple conferences. I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, I'll let you in on a little secret on all of these uh, images that we've shown. If you just sort of zoom out a bit, um, there's uh, there's some actual gameplay going on. It's tough to capture uh, gameplay uh, on this engine without uh, seeing what's really happening. So give you an idea of, of this level we built. We you know sitting here throwing a bomb on our desk. This is one of the bomb sites. It's a uh, you're trying to blow up a master plan proposal. Uh, here's that that vacant storefront we dressed up with, uh, you know, the, really just giving some homage. And there's just some total carnage at the at the end. And even we say even up close, uh, the the level looks great and plays well. But key to all of this is the texturing. Um, so that that texture. This is that that road you can see here in Photoshop. Um, it's just a layer. Uh, it's actually, this image is half, and what I did is I doubled the height of it, mirrored it, uh, twisted, so you can see this blemish on the pavement here, it's here. What it did is it gave us a nice seam in the middle of a road, and you'll notice that if you look at a wide street, um, it's not just a clean sheet of pavement. There's always sort of seams as, the, uh, as they build it. And then we put on the paint and we destroyed it. We added, this is just the burn tool. Um, we went in and we erased uh, with the brush tool, started to erase the stuff so it wasn't perfect, so it looked like uh, it was doing. And so here is a view outside of our office. Again, look at the crosswalk. You can see it's been eaten away uh, by snow. There's no perfect rectangle on any of these uh, painted areas. And so when I show you what our 3D uh, view is, um, we really did our best to kind of um, mimic the the real area. This street is was brand new at the time. Um, you can see there's that burnt out area that we did. Um, I sit right here and, and look out over this all day and I kind of get to see it. Um, and we're able to kind of come in and, and, and match it, I think, pretty remarkably uh, well. Uh, so one of the things we're doing now, we're taking all those lessons, we're bringing them right back into City Engine. Um, I'm building out these uh, street uh, these street files. So here is just the pavement. And what I've done is I've created this coding system where um, you can see I have a one as a solid line, uh, two is a dash white line, three solid yellow, four is a uh, dash yellow. And so that one indicates what's happening on the top. Um, two is what's happening in the middle and then three what's happening on the right edge. So three dash three is a solid yellow line and one dash one is a solid white line. And then in the middle, I've um, two one is tire wear, two two are cracks, two three is a manhole. Um, so I created this system inside of Photoshop and then I exported all of these JPEGs uh, along with normal maps um, and uh, the bump maps. And this is my key inside of my CGA. So here's my street uh, texture naming guidelines. Left side, if it's a zero, there's no paint. Um, so lane hyphen XXX goes, corresponds exactly to this. So zero, two, three would be no paint on the left side two in the middle um, and three on the outside. So two in the middle is cracks and three is solid yellow. Um, inside of City Engine, um, 
just some probability. We have a slider for cracks, a slider for manholes, a slider for patches. Uh, we're passing along a couple of parameters. So we're figuring out what direction the lane is headed and then where the lane is, if it's in the middle. Um, so if it's a single lane, an inner lane, a middle lane. Uh, and then we're going here to get the road texture. Um, and so here, all we're doing is building what that JPEG is going to be. Lane, what that left number is, um, what the right number is. And so inside of City Engine, this is sort of uh, what it starts to look like. Um, as we sort of, and I can tell you, I've looked at a lot of streets, been to a lot of cities. Uh, there's very few pristine pieces of pavement out there with with none of this um, this deterioration so um, where we're headed we're adding just I think uh, we've passed a um, a threshold where we know to make a scene entirely realistic uh, we got to add the details um, so we'll be extending you know drawings like this and we're adding in all of the, the different little things so we're constantly assessing what we've looked at and um, and looking for ways to add uh, additional realism. And as we bring them into these uh, engines like Unreal and these gaming engines, to have the textures already generated for us in City Engine um, is so key because it uh, makes that work, uh, that workflow so much faster. So with that, I'd just like to thank everyone again for the opportunity. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, um, the presentation. I wish I was there to see everyone's reactions. Hopefully, it's all um, it's all good. Um, and um, if you're looking to connect with me, here's uh, my website. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to hit me up. Ask me any type of question uh, you'd like. I mentioned I'd share with you that ArcGIS online link. There's a few different examples uh, that you can look at. And um, yeah, thank you again. Thanks, Matt, Bruno, Gabrielle, uh, Pascal, Dominic, everyone over there. Um, and all these uh, City Engine users, all of us, we're doing some awesome work. And uh, thanks for the inspiration. And hopefully I will see you next year. If you're headed to the Ezra User Conference, I will be there. I'll be exhibiting. I'll be attending. I'll be um, looking to connect with any City Engine user. So be sure to look for me there as well. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, have a great day. Uh, have a, has a, have a great conference.